Hey everybody, I'm here sitting in the tiny house having my coffee with all of you. Just looking out at my beautiful property and hopefully this is going to be an enjoyable day. So I'm going to try and keep this video shorter today. So I'm going to show you the things that I planted. Look at this patch of passion fruit vine I found on the side of the road. All that's going to happen is the city mowers will come and mow this down. So I'm going to try and get a few of these. Well, I don't know, maybe just one today. Maybe two and transplant them up by the tiny house. There they are. I transplanted them yesterday. Yep, they did get all wilty, but I shoveled them from the sun and watered them and then it rained and they are all doing good. There's like, I think four separate plants down in there and I'm hoping that they will just grow and sprawl all over this to provide a natural shade barrier. And look it. This is crazy. I've got lemon balm popping up all over the place. Just wild. There's more over here too. Oh yeah, I gotta take care of these weeds. And more in between these pots. I have no idea how it happened, but it happened. And all three of the other passion fruit vines are doing okay. Remember this one? This one, all of these leaves were completely wilted and I was gonna cut them off, but I didn't. And so we've got a new shoot coming up here and they are going to be growing just fine. And this one is doing really well too. So I'm happy about that. So happy. I think I'm going to go ahead and try cilantro. I might as well. I've got the seeds. This packet, I'm pretty sure Miss Margaret gave them to me. And I haven't had luck growing cilantro. So I'm going to try it again. See if I can put it in this herb garden where I took various things out like the nasturtium. And it gets a little bit more shade over here, so wish me luck. I am using up all of my cilantro seeds. I don't care. There's a ton in here. There's a ton in here. A ton in here. A ton in here. A whole bunch in here. And even down in here in this kind of crappy soil I just threw in there. So time to cover them up with about a quarter inch of soil and water them. I got them all covered up. I'm just going to water them. That's a quarter inch of soil. I don't know how much a quarter inch is, so. Yep, just make them nice and moist. What do you think, guys? You think this will grow? Y'all, please pray that this cilantro grows. I love fresh cilantro. I, lo I even love to dry my own cilantro. I've not been very successful yet, so. Whoops, shouldn't spill the water. So, please, please, pretty please. Say a prayer that this cilantro grows. Might be a little bit late in the season. I don't know. I hope it grows. One more. I'm going to be totally surprised if this one grows. Honestly, because of the kind of soil that's underneath of this. I should have dug it up and just replaced it with all that good soil, but I didn't. Eh, it's an experiment. But we'll see. What the heck? Why not? In between this eggplant plant and these dying tomato plants that I pulled out of the buckets and this volunteer lemon balm can you believe that i'm just gonna plant some down here and see what happens Ta -da! it's raining so i'm just gonna go ahead and let it get rained on while i was out foraging i found the most fantastic amazing mushroom i'm sorry you guys i gotta share it with you oh my goodness i've been walking around in this area for days and I didn't see either one of these. Let's just give you an idea how big they are. Look at this. All right. And then look at this one. Look at how big it is. Of course, I don't know what it is. I need to pull it up, turn it over, and check it out. Wow. You can already tell it bruises blue. Poor spore surface is porous. Bunch of little holes. The stem is red. Would you look at that? Oh my gosh. Boy, I wish this was edible. So, I'm going to have to find out exactly what this is. Because I've been seeing so many of them. I've just never seen any this big. Oh my lord. I broke it open and the flesh doesn't immediately bruise blue. The spore surface does. I mean, you just barely touch it. 
and it starts turning blue. Same with this one. Gosh, look how big it is. Oh, gosh. This is an older one. So that stains pretty blue pretty quick. Okay, I have been looking and looking, and this may be a bicolor bolete, which is edible, but it can also be a uh, bolete sensibilis, I think it is. They look very similar, um, and they have a lot of the same characteristics. The one thing that me makes me think that this is a bicolor bolete is that it'll stain, you know, it'll bruise blue immediately, but then it goes to brown later on. Remember how this whole thing was covered in blue? And this part does not bruise, but the stem bruises. Oops. <laughs> The stem, well, it did bruise blue right away. Hmm. The difference, the, the Bolete Sensibilis, uh, it is poisonous, and you can't eat it. Uh, obviously, duh. But there are so many characteristics that are similar that I'm just not sure. I mean, look at that. Look at these mushrooms. Look at how much food I would get. Look at my fingernails. I've been playing in the dirt. I'm always playing in the dirt. I would get many meals out of this mushroom, or these two mushrooms, but I am not willing to take a chance, so I'm not going to eat it. But what I am going to do is I'm going to dehydrate it and see if I can set it on fire. <laughs> a little information about this mushroom, Borangia bicolor, two-colored bolete. Um, it's a medium to large size mushroom, a deep blue indigo bruising of the pore surface, and a less dramatic bruising coloration change in the stem over a period of several minutes are identifying characteristics that distinguish it from similar poisonous species like Boletus sensibilis. The mushroom I found certainly fits many of these characteristics, but there was one characteristic that made me think that, I don't know, maybe this is a Boletus sensibilis. This is the description of the Boletus sensibilis, and what got me mostly about this that was different from the other one is that the Boletus sensibilis, which is a poisonous mushroom, has a curry-like odor, and the mushroom that I found definitely had a curry-like odor. The mushroom I found is on the left. The display in the middle is the bicolor bolete, and the one on the right is the Boletus sensibilis, which is poisonous. So you can see now why I'm very concerned about eating this mushroom, and the curry scent kind of leads me to believe that this is not the edible version. It is a Boletus sensibilis, and again, I'm not going to eat it. I'm just going to set it on fire. I was so excited when I found that mushroom, but as you can see, it's very tricky identifying mushrooms, and I'm not willing to take a chance. I'm sticking to what I know, and even if that is an edible mushroom, I'm not going to eat it unless I'm 100% sure. I would have to have some, like a mushroom expert sitting in front of me, you know, cooking it up and eating it themselves before I would actually want to try it, so you got to be careful. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, a couple things. Oh, down in the description box, if you're looking for a way to support this channel and you don't want to dish out a bunch of money, well, there are links down below to sign up for free trials for Amazon Prime, Amazon Music. I don't know if I put audibles down there or not, but if you sign up for a free 30-day trial that you can cancel at the end of your trial, I get $3 for every free trial sign up. You do have to have a debit or credit card, um, but they won't bill your credit card or debit card until it's time. And Amazon is really good about sending out reminders. Well, you know, it's almost the end of your trial period. We'll be billing your card and blah, blah, blah. So make sure you sign up with a valid email. And um, I'll earn three bucks per free trial. So please go down and check that out. That would really, really help me a lot. Also, you can offer applause. Down below the video, there's like a little bar. 
and there's like up vote, down vote, and then there's a little applause button. You can hit applause and donate whatever amount you want to, and that also helps support me. And of course, you can always join my Patreon. I don't do a lot on Patreon, but I think that people that are sticking with me on Patreon just want to support the channel and not expect anything in return. I love you guys on Patreon so much, and I love our little chats that we have in there every now and again. Um, and you can also donate to my PayPal if you'd like to. Um, anyhow, yeah, eBay. Oh, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.